In this video, I'll cover all the videos that come on this actual context point, which is seven chapter of the Search for Better Health module. While doing the seconds, I go for the, those five videos, Search for Better Health 7.1 to 7.5. I'll go for the verbs, which are online red, and also content and, and link the verbs to content. So you can also just press on any of these if you want to jump straight to that point in the video that covers that dot point. But I'll cover the first dot point now, which is discuss the role of quarantine in preventing the entry and spread of disease and plants and animals into Australia or across regions of Australia. Discuss just means we need to identify the role and provide arguments for and or against that role. So we need to be able to talk about stuff that comes into Australia, uh, so quarantine into Australia and quarantine across Australia and the role of, of it in terms of in Australia. So for example, we've got busy ports and busy um, cargo ships that come in on a daily basis. So our ports and our airports are very, very, very busy, which means we've got million people come, millions of people coming into the country. And with those people, we can come have products as well. So for example, we might have soil, plant, plant products, animals, and animal products come into that country in those shipping containers or with the people that come from the planes. And those might have diseases on them, right? So they may have disease or they might carry pathogens that cause disease. So what we do is we basically make sure that we don't allow the entry of these different parts, so soil, plants, plant products, animal and animal products. And we do this to make sure that we avoid the entry and spread of exotic diseases into Australia and across Australia. And also we avoid the entry and spread of introduced species into Australia or across Australia. And basically when it comes to quarantine, the reason why I quarantine, so provide arguments for that it's very, very useful. And um, basically if we don't have quarantine, then things could come into Australia. And once they are into Australia, in Australia, it'd be very, very hard to stop if we don't have any form of quarantine. So quarantine is the most effective way of making sure that we can prevent the rapid spread of any diseases that might come from these different products. That's basically what this stop point wants to talk about. The next stop point talks about the effectiveness of some of these, right? So process and analyze information from secondary sources to evaluate the effectiveness of quarantine in preventing the spread of plant and animal diseases into Australia and across regions of Australia. So evaluate the effectiveness means we need to make judgment on the effectiveness based on criteria. So we need to make our own judgment, but we need to base it on some kind of facts. So this means the criteria. So for example, how dangerous is that disease in other parts of the world and how dangerous is it in Australia? And how many cases are there across the world and how many cases are there in Australia? So if we use those criteria, we can make our own judgment based on facts, right? So we need to talk about animal and plants into Australia and animal and plants across Australia and how quarantine is preventing those diseases um, across those regions, right? So for example, something prevent, being prevented to come into Australia would be the mad cow disease, and that's a form of animal disease. In UK, we've had 160 people that died by 2009 in UK. We also had 40,000 infected cattle that had to be slaughtered in the UK alone, right? So basically, our criteria, it's very dangerous in the UK, but it's not dangerous in Australia because there's no cases. So first of all, we don't have any cases. Nearby, we don't have any danger. So those are two examples of how we prevented the mad cow disease from stopping uh, becoming a big problem in Australia through the use of quarantine because we're very strict on what comes into Australia when it comes to meat products from from the UK. Another one is plant disease that is, that is a problem overseas. So fire blight disease is a big problem in New Zealand. It causes millions of lost dollars in terms of crops such as apple and pear crops. And that's a huge problem in New Zealand just around the corner, but it's no problem at all in Australia. Right, so here we have again the criteria, it's dangerous in other parts, there are many cases in other parts of the world, but there are no cases in Australia. The reason why is because we have very strict regulation in terms of what can come in from, from New Zealand, anything that might have fire blood disease cannot come in. So therefore our quarantine measures are successful. Um, in terms of across Australia, so this is if one region has it, but it's not meant to spread from one region, not meant to spread from one region to the other. One example would be the equine flu. Now, there was a pretty big outbreak in 2007 because our quarantine measures actually failed a bit in terms of horses that came in from the country that did have the equine flu and it spread then. But uh, that disease spread quite quickly in 2007 across regions of New South Wales and Queensland. But once we realized it was becoming a problem, our quarantine measures quickly stepped up. So we quarantined any affected horses. We tr banned the travel of horses across Australia and we also canceled any horse races or anything else to do with horses and we disinfected the equipment that was used by the horses. And all of these basically made sure that there were no new cases. By 2008, the spread was completely stopped. There were no new cases 
of equine flu within a year of it starting or less than a year right so again that shows you how effective our actual measures were across australia as well so once there was a problem we could stop it quite quickly because of our quarantine also another example would be plant diseases uh, this is the queensland fruit fly and the queensland fruit fly is a big problem because it, it basically makes fruit un unedible especially pears and everything else that comes from queensland because the queensland have high amounts of these fruit flies so it's heavily affected queensland but there's no significant numbers of fruit flies in new south wales and the reason being is we have very strict basically border controls you get fined if you carry over um, fruits from that, that infected area so they check your bags make sure you don't have any fruit coming in and they're very strict in general to make sure that you don't basically spread that fruit fly into new south wales and so far we've been quite successful uh, so the idea is basically you need to evaluate so you need to make the judgment so i would say it's overall it's quite successful right and then i would base that on criteria so i'd say these diseases are big problems in other parts but then they have the spread has been reduced due to the fact that we have a pretty effective um quarantine and you go into a bit of detail and obviously you mentioned that as well the next one was the you performed an investigation to examine plant shoots and leaves and gather first information on evidence of pathogens and insect plants so performing an investigation just means you need to know the procedure of what you did when it comes to that investigation and you also need to know the safety precautions as well and what you actually did is you gather first information to examine the evidence of pathogens and insect pests so you tried to find evidence that some of these leaves you looked at were actually infested by pathogens or by insect pests. So the first step was quite for straightforward. You were given either pictures or actual samples of leaves, or you went out and collected samples of leaves, and you examined those samples for any evidence. Some evidence would be, for example, if it has many of these spots, spotty uh, infections are often fungal infections, that'd be evidence of a pathogen. Also, have the, they have these mosaic patterns, they're often a viral infection. So again, that would be an example of a viral infection. And you'd have these bacterial infections are shown by having dead, dead parts, dead tissue. These are bacterial infections or evidence for bacterial infections. And if there are little animals living on it, or if there is some bite mark somewhere, or if the actual leaf is hollow, then that would be evidence for that being insect pests. Right? So you would have kind of known that. You would have had a booklet about the different types of diseases you can find and compare the, the samples you had to so those diseases in the book or on web pages. Next step is you might have also used a scalpel to basically cut open those leaves or those stems to look for maybe more evidence for insect pests. So they might be inside the leaves, so you need to cut them open to find them. And that could be one other procedure you might have used. And also you might have looked at the actual leaves under the microscope, and this was done to find more pathogens. So as you might be able to see the pathogens under the microscope. So all these procedures you would have done to try to find those insects or the evidence of pathogens or insects in your leaves. Safety precautions would have been to make sure your scalpel um, was used with care because your scalpel can be hurtful if you cut yourself. So you need to use that with care. And also the leaves that you examined, you wanted to remove the leaves after you've done your experiment because you could have otherwise spread disease unknowingly. The next one was explain how one of the following strategies has, con has controlled and or prevented disease. And we're going to use, so we're going to explain how, so which means we're going to show how, show how public health programs have prevented disease. We're going to talk about prevention and public health programs. So first of all, what is prevention? If we talk about treatment, that means we have one person who is ill and we're going to give him some kind of treatment and he, they become healthy again. Whereas prevention means we try to avoid anyone from actually becoming ill, so they're all healthy. So prevention means no, no one becomes ill. So the idea of, of a public health program would, for example, be the Heart Foundation. The Heart Foundation is a non-profit organization that helps reduce heart disease or fights heart disease. And it does so by producing an education campaign. So you might have seen uh, TV ads or flyers and anything else. And what they do is they target the risk factors. So they try to educate people about the risk factors of heart disease. Because heart disease is one of the most deadly diseases in Australia. And that would be, for example, if you have an unbalanced diet, if you have too much saturated fat, you increase your risk of getting heart disease. Lack of exercise is also a risk factor, and so is smoking. So what they do is they basically spread information. They try to make sure people know that they should be quitting smoking, that they should be doing regular exercise, and they should be having a balanced diet, especially in, fruit, in high in fruits and vegetables and low in animal fat. And they spread all that information, and the result has been that there's been a decreased amount of heart disease in Australia, so it's been actually been going down 
one of the reasons why is because we have these really good public health programs that try to basically increase awareness and reduce, prevent the occurrence of some of these diseases such as heart disease. Uh, and the last one was process information and use of available evidence to discuss the changing methods of dealing with plant and animal diseases, uh, including the shift in emphasis from the treatment and control to management or prevention of disease. So discuss the changing methods. In this case, it means we basically need to identify the issues around the changing methods and provide arguments for and or against. Uh, so first of all, we had a pretty limited understanding of the cause of disease. So we had bits of control and treatment and prevention methods in the past. So control means we need to try to stop the spread of disease. So for example, ancient Chinese used some form of quarantine in the past. Treatment means we're trying to treat people to become healthy again. And we, for example, in the Middle Ages, we used some quinine, a medication to treat malaria already. And also prevention refers to trying to prevent people from becoming sick in the first place. And for example, people in the Middle Ages um, sometimes inhaled smallpox scabs. And these scabs uh, had the smallpox virus, but it was a weakened form of that virus, which means they became immune and didn't become sick anymore. It was like a vaccine. Uh, so these are some examples of control treatment prevention used throughout history. But for most of our history, we had limited understanding. We didn't really know anything about these different methods. But now we have much more understanding, especially after Louis Pasha and Koch in the 1850s onwards. But now we know that, for example, if we focus on treatment and control, the problem is that treatment and control is more expensive than using prevention and management. It's also less effective, and there's more complications. So these are the issues I've identified. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide arguments for these being issues when it comes to treatment and control. So I'm saying that prevention and, man and management of, for example, heart disease, this would be a disease that is, we have shifted from treatment and we're now trying to focus on prevention and management. Because if we're just trying to treat it, first of all, that means there will be more heart disease if we're just trying to treat it. Whereas prevention and management will reduce the amount of heart disease compared to treatment alone. So that means it is actually going to be less expensive because the more people have heart disease, the more expensive it will be. So treatment will be more expensive than uh, prevention or management. And also it's going to be less costly. If more people have heart disease, it's going to cost more, right? So um, treatment uh, in this case will be more expensive, whereas actual prevention management will be less costly. And these are arguments for my statement I made earlier. And then also they have people of better quality of life, especially if they have, if they delay the onset of heart disease or if they prevent it altogether, they don't, don't actually have the disease. So they have a better quality of life which means they have less complications. So if you had just treatment options, there'd be more complications, whereas if you have prevention management options, you have a better quality of life, which means less complications. That was our example for a animal disease. Plant disease would be, for example, our use of GM foods. So we were trying to move from control to prevention. We used to use a lot of pesticides, and these pesticides would try to control the spread of disease. But now we're using GM foods, genetically modified foods. And what they do is they basically um, stop and stop us having to use pesticides, which means less of these plants become resistant. Right? Pesticide resistance is less, so less resistance, which means we save more money because we have to invest less money into actually researching new pesticides. And also, the this way is more effective because if the actual pesticides become resistant, if the pests become resistant to pesticides, that means the treatment will be less effective. So. By focusing on these GM foods, which basically kill things for us, we have less occurrence of disease, thereby we save money and we have a more effective treatment, a more effective way of dealing with these type of diseases. And that means we have less crops being lost as well. Right? So these are two examples of how we shifted from treatment or control to prevention or management. And the reasons being because we save more money, uh, it's more effective and generally it's less complications when we focus on prevention and management as opposed to treatment and control. This was just a summary of the last couple of top points, but hopefully that video is useful.